Next, we'll have a criterion. I have probably pronounced the group of. Yeah, I saw yesterday you were saying Mr. the Hrut. The Hrut? Yes. The Hrut. I was on top of the
um, very small, small population, uh, low income people, lower than me. Uh, I am one of the privileged people here, actually. My mother was a teacher. She grew up there. She retired recently. Okay? The access to internet in Namibia is expensive. I, I, uh, my friend basically bought internet here yesterday for like he bought it at 7 gig and the prices compared to Namibia and South Africa it's ridiculously low. Like, I was surprised. So they don't have the money to pay for internet. It's next to impossible. And when you do get like packages that say for the week you have internet, try using that day. And at Hulotu, because now everyone tries using them at the same time. And it's just your phone. So it's extremely slow. So what I after I got a job, what they do is they give you free internet. So they put an installation at my house and everything. So what I've now done is run my internet connection through the router. It's, it's a two-way connection, but it's way faster than what they normally use it. So now they're able to at least use it like faster as the internet. So what's happening is, because I didn't have the training that we were given by a man then, I was configuring my ubiquity router wrong completely. And the distance I was getting was the bare minimum. And it couldn't reach a lot of people. So now you have the internet, you really want to share it, you've bought this expensive thing on top of your room and you can't use it because of a lack of knowledge and the skills required to, to give it the best. So my next option was now to find another, another way where I didn't have to spend as much money again. So what I did was, at work, we use a router from Germany called the Fritzbox. That's, that's what our ISP provides in Namibia. So what happens is when there's a search in a DSL line, it tries the box, but it still works. It still gives out Wi-Fi. Which, which you can now use as a repeater. So I took some of the old boxes, went to the nearest houses, asked permission and stuff, so they allowed it. So what you do now is you connect that one to the ubiquity. It, it's like what we did here in the journey. You, you lock to the AP and then you rebroadcast. But now you're rebroadcasting to devices like laptops and phones. Yeah. So that's what I've done now like in the past six months. Uh, that's, what I've, that's how I've expended it without having to take out all the money to buy new equipment and stuff. Um, yeah, some of the obstacles I faced um, was the lack of community involvement. It's hard to get them involved. It's like they feel like you're trying to take control of the way they communicate, of the way they're doing things. So it's hard to convince them or to get them involved. It's like they don't want to get involved and they, they see this is what I can get from doing this. Like it actually benefits me. You know, think far ahead. Like if my child has access now, 10 years from now, I won't be the one struggling to get them a job or for them to get a job. And yeah, stuff like that. Uh, there's very few people involved. Yeah. Uh, like I said, the lack of equipment and the lack of knowledge is the main reason the network has not expanded very far. The equipment is expensive and um, shipping adds a lot to the price. Like when I was building that arcade game, the joystick, the price of the joypad, the shipping was three times the price of the joypad itself, which is actually ridiculous. Uh, so, like I said, my work around the high cost equipment was getting uh, those routers that I can now use as a repeater without having to buy new routers. Um, yeah. yeah, so what I was thinking in terms of the shipping is to establish a community amongst us here because we are from all over the world. And we here in Africa have a problem with shipping. So if we have a community whereby I say, I need something from the States. Anyone here know someone coming to Africa, coming to Namibia or South Africa? And it, it arrives there. You obviously you send the money, but now you, you save on the cost of shipping, at least. Which now allows you to buy maybe two, three devices instead of just one. 
uh, assist each other in getting resources. My, my biggest difficulty was getting access to resources. Like, sometimes when you don't have the knowledge, it's nice to have a detailed layout to this. I know it's like spoon feeding, but imagine someone in somewhere that has never done that. They, they need something like that, clear instructions on how to do something. I'm sure if, if it's available in English, there are people here, French speaking, uh, Swahili, who can translate, make it easier for the other ones out there as well. Um, yeah, sometimes, even if no one is coming to Africa to bring something along, I'm sure that some of you out here will know easier and cheaper methods to ship it with me. Yeah? So maybe just share that with everyone else, so that when someone is starting up, they're not discouraged by the price of equipment and shipping and the logistics of everything. So that it makes it easier for them. Yeah. This is one picture about the one router on top of the roof here. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you guys. questions from the first few sets of speakers. So what I'd like to do is, uh, before we break for lunch, give an opportunity that uh, we do a Q&A session. Uh, you all have mics. This first group of speakers are sitting next to you. So I'd like to see sort of like a discussion more than a, uh, you know, a, a biological discussion. So are there any questions? Yes, okay, so we'll start with the table. Okay, what? And say who you're directing the question. Mm, okay, uh, it's more like a couple of comments, more than a question, but for Joseph out there, I don't see him. Oh, over there, okay. Uh, one, uh, the first thing you showed was a blind guy that was asking for help. Well, we have two, pro two program blind programmers in Argentina that are using open source software to to get the things done, so we might see we might have to see how to deal with the language barrier. But I can put you in contact with them. Um, the other thing, uh, the internet that we well, we I am going to talk about it, this later. But the internet that we are trying to replicate here is mostly mostly built for high speed permanent connections and we are using technology that is thought from, from that perspective so uh, I think we have to, we developers uh, and all the developers that are around in this place we have to rethink about how we build technology for the reality of our own communities so instead of thinking about what train said instead of thinking about the last mile of us being the last mile Start thinking about us being the first mile and start creating the technology that helps our communities interconnect with each other, share the information that they need, and then share in between the communities and then and then and then. Um, so, there are a couple of technologies that can help you with that that are already around, are already stable. <coughs> this is a little bit, a little bit technical, but I, I think there are a lot of developers here. so might be useful for you. One is a, a database engine that is called CouchDB. It's a master-to-master -master replication thing that basically you have thousands of devices and they can um, sync each other peer-to-peer -peer instead of having a, a, a centralized database. And it's also sorted out so you don't have to do anything about it at all. It just works. Uh, and it has another plus, uh, that is, it's not a, an SQL thing, but it's JSON, it's an object-oriented database, so you can use it with other things. And there is another cool technology that's been developed, it's kind of getting in a stable standpoint, 
Uh, it's called IPFS, Internal Interplanetary File System. It's a replacement for the HTTP protocol. Uh, the idea is to create uh, a set of tools that help uh, in, uh, when, when the connectivity is not always there. So the idea is to build, um, to replicate information as, as much as you can. So if you access a Wikipedia article, for example, and, and your colleague that is next to you access the same article, uh, instead of getting the article from Wikipedia, you get it from your partner, from, from the person next to you. And even the, if the connectivity gets out, uh, it gets shut down, you can access the, the content because it's local. So, uh, if you, if any of you are interested in these technologies, uh, we can schedule some time during these days to look up them in a technical way.